Today we'll learn about polymorphism and we'll first start with dynamic binding. Many times the type of a reference variable directly matches the class of the object in which it refers. Example, checker black. The black variable can be used to point to an object that is formed by instantiating the checker class, but it doesn't have to. The variable type and the object it points to must be harmonious, but their types not need to be perfectly identical. The relation of a reference variable and the object it points to is more bendable than that. The word polymorphism can be defined as having many forms. A polymorphic reference is a reference variable that can point to different types of objects at different moments in time. The exact method invoked through a polymorphic reference, the actual source code executed, can differentiate from one invocation to the next. Example, obj.say if the reference obj is polymorphic, it can point to various types of objects at different at various times. Therefore, if the source code is in a loop, or if it is in a method that is invoked greater than once, that line of code can be invoked. That line of code can invoke a various version of the same method each time it is called. At a certain place in time, the allegiance is formed to execute specific code to accomplish a method invocation. This allegiance is referred to as binding, a method invocation to a method definition. A lot of the times, the binding of a method invocation to a method definition occurs at compile time. For polymorphic references, the conclusion can't be made until runtime. The method definition that is, usual, that is utilized is a certain by the type of object being referenced at the moment of invocation. This deferred allegiance is called dynamic binding or late binding. It has less, lesser efficiency than binding at compile time because the conclusion is made whilst in the ex execution of the program. The conclusion is made whilst in the execution of the program. We can appoint a polymorphic reference in Java in two ways, by utilizing inheritance and utilizing interfaces. Polymorphism via inheritance. When we declare a reference variable utilizing a certain class name, it can be utilized to point to any object of that class. It can point to any object of that class that is affiliated to its declared type with inheritance. Example, class mammal is the parent of the class horse. Then a mammal reference. Then a mammal reference can be used to refer to an object of class horse. Example: mammal warm blood. Horse Rudolph equals new horse. Warm blood equals Rudolph, which is correct. The power to assign an object of one class to a reference of the class of the other class might portray a similar concept from the concept of strong typing, but that's false. Strong typing affirms that a variable can be assigned only a value according with its declared type, which is what is occurring. Inheritance forms an is a relation. A horse is a mammal, 
thus appointing a horse object to a mammal reference is accurate. The opposite procedure pointing the mammal object to a horse reference can be appointed, but it needs a special cast. Assigning a reference in this path is to a lesser extent helpful and can cause bad situations, and a horse has the behavior of a mammal, but the reverse it can be untrue. If a mammal class were derived from a class called animal, the next assignment can also be legal. Animal beast equals new horse. An object reference can be utilized to point to any object because all classes are ancestors of the object class. Therefore, the mammal variable beast can be utilized polymorphically because at any element in time, it can point to an animal object, a mammal object, or horse object. Reference variables point to objects. Main differences between reference variables and objects. An object is an instance derived from the structure of a class. A reference is just a variable that points to the, the location of the object in memory. A reference has no real meaning and its behavior is the same as that of the name of a person. If every of the three classes define a method called E, that is implemented in various ways because the subclass overrode the definition it inherited, this invocation invokes the E method, but the certain variation of the method it called is specified at runtime. Example, beast. When this line is executed, if beast currently refers to an animal object, the eat method of the animal class is called. If beast refers to a mammal object at this moment in time, the mammal version of eat is invoked. If it currently refers to a horse object, the horse version of eat is invoked. A reference variable can point to any object formed from any class affiliated to it by inheritance. Because animal and mammal symbolize generalized abstractions, they may be defined in abstract classes. but it does not destroy the power for polymorphic references. If, eat, if the eat method in the mammal class is abstract and is appointed specific definitions in the horse, cat, and tiger classes, all derived from mammal, a mammal reference variable can be utilized to point to either objects instantiated from either of the horse, cat and tiger classes and can be utilized to polymorphic can be utilized to carry out the eat method on either of them even if mammal is abstract now we'll discuss the polymorphic code example which is an example of polymorphic polymorphism via inheritance in the other video. The main class has a main driver that instantiates a staff worker object of company employee and calls the payday method to pay them all. The program output consists of data of every company employee and how much each is paid, if they are ought to be paid. Staff worker class holds an array of objects that symbolize individual company employees of different kinds. The array is declared to hold member references, but in reality, filled with objects formed from many other classes, such as CEO and company employee.
those classes are descendants of the member class, so the declarations are valid. The staff list array contains of polymorphic references. The payday method of the staff worker class iterates through the list of company employees, displaying their data and referencing their pay methods to calculate how much each company employee must be paid. The invocation of the pay method is polymorphic because every class has its own variation of the pay method. The member class is abstract. It does not symbolize it does not symbolize a specific type of company employee and is not supposed to be instantiated. It serves as a descendant of each company employee classes and compromises of information that applies to all company employees. Each company employee contains a name, address, and phone number, so variables to store these values are assigned in the member class and are inherited by all ancestors. The member class has a two-string method to return the data controlled by the member as a string representation. It also has an abstract method named pay that includes no parameters and returns a value of type double. At the abstract member level, it would be improper to give a definition for this method. Each ancestor of member supplies its own particular definition for pay. This code representation shows the element of polymorphism. Each class knows greatest how it should control a particular behavior, like paying the company employee. Polymorphism lets us interact with related objects in accordant but unique ways. Because pay is defined abstractly in the member class, the payday method of staff worker pays every company employee polymorphically. Because when pay is abstract, once it is inherited by the child classes, you are overriding the parent's method. Thus, it is now different for each child object. Thus, is polymorphic. Also polymorphic because the binding of the method is dynamic or late binding, that is, as it is still related to by inheritance. If the pay method was not abstract because, sorry, if the pay method was not created, okay, where was I? So we'll just we'll just go back a bit. Polymorphism lets us interact with related objects in accordant but unique ways. Because pay is defined abstractly in the member class, the payday method of staff worker pays every company employee polymorphically. Because when pay is abstract, once it is inherited by the child classes, you are overriding the parent's method, thus it is now different for each child object. Thus it is polymorphic. It is also polymorphic because the binding of a method is dynamic or late binding, as it is still related to by inheritance. If the pay method was not created in member, the compiler would throw an error when pay was invoked through the element of the staff list array. The abstract method assures the compiler that any object reference referenced through the staff list array contains a pay method defined for it. If the pay method in the college volunteer class had not been overridden in the college volunteer class, the volunteer the college 
volunteer class would have been reason abstract and not have been instantiated because you have to override all abstract methods from the parent in order to not be abstract. The two-string method is overridden to concatenate the extra data that company employee controls to the info returned by the parent's variation of two-string, which is referred using the super reference. The CEO class is a relative of company employee and thus inherits from member and company employee. The constructor of CEO passes along its data to the company employee constructor and sets the CEO bonus to zero. A bonus is awarded to a, C to a CEO using the award bonus method. This method is invoked in the payday method in the staff worker for the only CEO that is part of the staff list array. Note that the generic member reference has to be casted into a CEO reference to call the award bonus method because it doesn't exist for a member. The CEO class overrides the pay method so that it first asserts the payment as it would for any company employee then it adds the bonus. The pay method of the company employee class is called utilizing super to acquire the standard payment amount. This technique is better than utilizing only the pay rate variable. So the pay method of the company employee class is called utilizing the super keyword I think that's done with the super and the dot operator, so that would invoke the method of the super class versus utilizing the super the super reference in the child's constructor in the first line that would only call the parent's constructor. You can also use a super reference with the dot operator to access the parent's variables. This is the end of the polymorphism discussion via inheritance. Hope it helps. Thanks.